So today, we're gonna talk about anemones, and specifically, how to make anemones stay where you told them to. We are shopping for anemones, and I already have a red bubble tip anemone in my tank, and now I'm deciding on a second one, and I can't decide which one I want. Hey Shelly, which one do you think Bing Bing will like? Uh, anemone. Let's go with the green, the, bu uh, the green bubble tip, I think. So everyone wants that classic clownfish and enemy pair, uh, but there's a lot of things that you might not realize about anemones before you try one. So a couple of things that a lot of people don't know is that one, uh, anemones are incredibly difficult to take care of. Um, they need just flawless parameters, and most people will not put them in a tank that is new. Uh, usually people wait six months to a year before they put an anemone in and I personally think that's a bit extreme If you can get your parameters level within three to four months um, I think it's okay like in my tank for example I put my red bubble tip anemone in after four months and I've had no problems whatsoever And I've been really happy with it The most important thing and the reason people tend to wait so long is to get the parameters even uh, the thing an anemone cannot handle is for, for example, for your ammonia to spike. That'll just kill it uh, a lot of times. Red bubble tip anemones, which are the ones I'm going to recommend you try first if you're on your first anemone, um, are a little hardier, a little bit tougher, but even still, they are pretty delicate. They also tend to be very sensitive to salinity. So you have to be able to mix your salt right when you do your water changes, mix it right each time and keep that salinity even uh, all the time and not allow for the salinity to become higher or for the salinity to become lower. You have to keep it even. Another thing that makes first time anemone owners feel a little disgruntled is when you find out that anemones move. They inevitably go to the places you do not want them to go. So for example, my uh, rose tip bubble anemone, I put it in the tank, gave it a perfect spot, had everything it needed. What does it do? it goes to the very back corner where you can't see it and just plops down and kills my star polyps. And the anemone is perfectly happy. It's just me, I don't like it there. So I'm working on a technique to make an enemy stay where you want them to, to stay in a place where you can see them and enjoy them. So the first thing you need to know about an enemy is that they cannot be acclimated the same way you acclimate a fish. You can't just float it in the water for a little bit and then dump it in. If you do that, the anemone will die every single time. For an anemone, you have to drip acclimate it. And you do this, you need a bucket, you need an anemone, and you need your hose. This is just the one that I use for water changes. And then you need something to clamp it off to slow the flow of the water. You know, I have a little clamp, and you just tighten that down so that when the water comes out, it just comes out at a little drip, it comes out very slowly. Acclimating an anemone uh, is a pretty long process. It takes, you know, you know, between 45 minutes and an hour to do it right. You just gotta go very slow because they're a really sensitive animal. So you get your water flowing, and as you can see, it is gonna be coming out of here. I'm gonna let it open to get it started, and then we are gonna move it down to just Barely a trickle, just dripping out of the end of the hose. Just barely letting it drip out, just very slow so that it gives the anemone time to adjust. And then, once you've got your water set, you can open up your bag and put the hose in. And I use a little clamp to hold the hose to the bag and then you just give that time to adjust. Uh, usually it takes about 45 minutes for the bag to feel, fill and for the anemone to adjust to the water in your tank. All right, while that little guy acclimates, I will show you how to keep them in one place using an anemone cup. I'm not entirely sure why this works. Uh, somehow putting them in this little cup, which they could easily crawl out of, you know, somehow it just tricks them into staying there. I think of it as like when you tie a horse to like a lawn chair or something. The horse could easily pull away from the chair, but it doesn't because it's on a rope. Sort of like you trick it. So to get an anemone to live in a cup like this, all you've got to do, give it a little piece of rubble, a little piece of live rock to hold on to. Uh, I just kind of snapped this piece off this morning. And once it has something to hold on to, then it will just attach to it and usually stay in the cup. Uh, it doesn't work 100% of the time, but the guys here say it works most of the time. 
So after you've given your time, your enemy the time to acclimate, you've let the water drip into the bag. It will overflow into the bucket. Uh, it takes about 45 minutes. You reach in there, grab your enemy. Uh, a lot of people are shocked by the way that enemies feel. They feel kind of like angry jelly. Uh, so you can pull it out of there and put it into your cup. Once you put it into the cup, you can take it out of the bucket. Put it into your display tank. So I'll put it right there on the side of the glass, stick it to the side, and then give it some time to settle in. When you first put them in there, they don't look so good. They're stressed out, they're shriveled up. You've just kind of got to give them some time to settle in. They are okay if you did everything right. If your parameters are right, you slowly acclimated them, it will be okay. You just have to give it the time to settle in. You know, Bing Bing's over here already checking it out. You know, he likes this green one better than his red one already. But uh, I'm gonna give that an enemy some time to settle in, and here in a little while, in a couple hours, I'll check in, and then I'll show you again a video after a few days once it's not stressed out anymore. Sometimes you're actually better off without having a clownfish in there. Uh, clownfish love anemones, and sometimes they will actually love them to death. Uh, they will bother them too much and it will actually kill the anemone. Um, that's one thing to take careful note of if you do have a clownfish and you get an anemone. The anemone needs to be two to three times larger than your clownfish or your clownfish will in fact just love it to death. Bing Bing's not going to know what to do now that he has two different anemones to choose from. You know I just really hope he leaves it alone enough uh, for long enough for the anemone to really get settled in and to get comfortable. Okay, so it's been in there for a few hours. Things are looking good. And Bing Bing has decided, yep, this is mine. So I'm going to make another video in a couple days. It's still not completely open. Still looks just a little bit stressed out. And I just want to show you each step of the process. Because when you put your anemone in the tank the first time and it doesn't look as big and beautiful as when it was at the pet store, uh, people start to kind of worry, you know, it's, I'm just want to show you that it's okay It just takes these guys a little bit of time to get settled in so once it's fully open. I will make another video All right, so we're looking pretty good uh, The anemone has stayed in the cup so far and Bing Bing has claimed it as his own and if you're new to this channel uh, Bing Bing is the clownfish and he actually knows how to do tricks I do a couple other videos like that where I train the fish but I've been expanding into some other stuff lately, uh, just some like beginner level aquarium stuff. So I hope you enjoy and I hope you find it helpful. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. One of my goals with how to train your fish is one, zany aquarium solutions. Two, uh, demystify the saltwater hobby and to make it more accessible to more people. So if you enjoyed this, be sure to subscribe. And also one thing I wanna remind you of, all my videos come with a free resource, me. So you can ask me a question in the comment section, or if you have a question you think, oh, I don't know if I want other people to know I have this question, you can shoot me a DM on Instagram. Uh, you can follow me here. I'm super easy to get a hold of. Give me a DM anytime and I'll get back to you and I can help you out. Also, I'm a member of several different Facebook groups like Fish Talk, and I like to hang out there and help people out. So be sure to join a group like that. Uh, be a part of the community. Uh, I'm not just a talking head on YouTube. You know, we can virtually hang out in some places. All right, well, I'll see you again. Thanks so much, and bye.